We've got a big brown snake here on the road. I don't want to get too close to him because they're really fast. Oh my goodness. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm afraid. I know how fast you are, Mr. Brown Snake. I'm not going to get anywhere near you. Uh, one of the most poisonous snakes in the world. You don't want to get bitten by him. We're here, we're here at the beginning of the Simpson Desert and um, we're in Birdsville, we're about to leave Birdsville. Restocked, met up with Don Rollins and there was a video that I did with Don Rollins way back, maybe three or four years ago, uh, where Don and I went out into the Simpson Desert to some of the remote areas to tell some of the dreaming stories of uh, Simpson Desert. There'll be a link there in the movie. But anyway, so now we're heading out into Simpson Desert. It is open. Uh, the track to Dalhousie Spring, of course, is only four-wheel drive only. And we'll be heading out there. Um, there are a number of routes, the French line, the WAA line, I think, the Rig Road as well. So there's a couple of tracks and we will, depending on the, on the conditions where we want to go, we might sort of zigzag our way across the Simpson Desert. Weather conditions are perfect right now. So 23 degrees, really mild. Um, there are some storms still coming in. I'm not entirely sure whether they'll come in while we're actually in the Simpson, but later on in the trip they may well be hitting us. So our first stop will be Big Red, the largest sand dune in the Simpson Desert. And the first uh, challenge will be doing Little Red and then Big Red. So Big Red's the largest sand dune in the sand dune in Simpson Desert. But we've got some prep work to do on the car before we even do Little Red, just to lower the tyre pressures down. What's the full pressure of the tyres normally? Normal pressure on the road at the back is 48 pounds special. So if you think about that, we're going right down to 25. And even at the front, we're running at about 42, which we're taking down to 15. So I've got these little devices. I think they're called Strawn Tire Pressure Releases. They'll have some details there in the video. And that, I just screw those onto the valves and that you can preset them to certain pressures where they'll just turn off automatically. My tread is basically touching that much area right now. And if I let it down a little bit more, I can make that area, increase that area to about there. And that evens out the pressure across the sand. So don't get bogged down. That's a theory. Let's see whether this just works. Yeah. All right. So that theory works. Uh, low ratio, second gear. No momentum necessary. Just gradually going up. And um, better clear. The tire should be just right to be able to do big red as well. Yeah, it's always a bit anxious this moment. There's a number of tracks going up to Big Red, so we'll just uh, give this a go. But we're going to do low ratio, second gear, and maximum revs, and just see how we pull. Yeah, so We need more momentum. <laughs> all right, at least we know now. Okay, so we have to reverse all the way back. All right, well, we didn't make it that time, so I still stay in second gear low ratio. Max out the revs. I have reduced the tire pressure down to about 18 or 19 pounds in the back, and the front's still about 15 and we'll see whether that can do it.
So tire pressure makes a big difference. From 25 at the back to 18 at the back, that made the difference. Well, Big Red is definitely the, the playground of anyone crossing the Simpson Desert. Uh, so it's worth spending a bit of time here and just enjoying it and uh, watching people with their different vehicles trying to get up the different tracks on Big Red. I have noticed that one of my tyres is not in top condition. Looks like the tyre has been spiked. You can see how it's sort of the tyre wall here. The tyres I've chosen to use are Cooper's STT Pros. Now what's so good about these is that they've got a really strong carcass both on the tread as well as on the wall. So I'm not too concerned about the damage here to the tire. We'll just have to monitor that. I do have two spare tires, but uh, I won't be able to do anything about these tires until I get to Alice Springs, I suspect. This guy's been up and down already about 10 times and he loves it. Up he goes again and a piece of cake. Going up the sand dune can be scary, but sometimes going down the sand dune is even scarier. Now we went up in second gear, so the idea is to actually go down the same gear, but we can't see whether anyone's coming up the track. All right, and now we're going down in second gear, keep the momentum going. Don't change directions, stay in the wheel ruts. Because if a car this size goes on an angle, you will flip and roll. There you go, that's my lesson for today. Uh, I'll keep my tyre pressures as they are for probably for at least the rest of the day I'd say because I know from past experience the next few dunes are pretty soft when approaching from the east side. We're crossing the Simpson Desert from east to west. The prevailing wind is from west to east and the sand dunes face north-south and there's a thousand of those that we actually have to cross. With the wind coming from the west, it means that you do sometimes have a more gentle slope on the west side and a steep drop off on the right on the east side. So traveling east to west means we're going up the steep side and then uh, down the west side. Look, I don't know which is easier. They both have their different challenges. Most people come from the west and therefore the west side tends to be dug out and rutty. And sometimes the east side is nice and smooth, even though it's steeper. We'll find out, won't we? Yippee! <laughs> well, I've never seen so many snakes out in the Simpson Desert. Another brown snake, and he's curled, ready to strike. Okay. All right. Let's see you later, Mr. Snake. Not as big as the last one. Bye. We're on Channel 10, as far as the UHF is concerned. So. I just make myself announced. Okay, it's um, westbound traffic uh, leaving Big Red. Uh, just in case there's anyone coming towards Big Red right now. All right, I'm not expecting any response. Uh, we're at the end of the tourist season and traffic has reduced quite substantially right now. All right, on to the next dune. So again, from past experience, I have known that this uh, dune is also quite challenging. So we'll stick to the same routine. Low ratio, second gear, lots of revs, and um, theoretically we should get over it in one go. Voila, all right. So at this stage, I go back to high ratio. And that way I can just engage whatever gear I need. The going between the sand dunes is usually pretty good. Um, there will be salt pans that we have to cross as well. They can be really treacherous. Uh, that's still yet to come. But I think we're going to just have a nice easy go. Well, not easy go, but they're just consistent now. Sand dune after sand dune after sand dune. With lots of yeehaw bumpy rides in between. Alright, so I'm going to try this time in 
high ratio first gear with some momentum. Alright, so high ratio first gear works as well. It depends on the sand dune. Um, with the coming from the east side, that last little section, you go up the track, and that last little section there will always be a slight, well, there'll be a, a crest on it which then goes steep. Uh, really clear sand and then back over again and um, that's where you've got to have enough momentum not to drop off there because it's usually usually wind blown sand that's really soft if we get stuck who's gonna help us ah that's why you have a passenger <laughs> always need a passenger get out there and dig get out there and push yeah well Maybe you actually have to be really nice to your passenger if you want a passenger at all. You need a desert pass to track or go across the Simpson Desert and covers for a number of national parks in South Australia. So that's what the desert pass looks like. And there's a whole bunch of useful information in there and uh, no doubt worth reading. But I guess it's a bit like instructions, you know, when all else fails, then read the instructions. But one new thing that I've noticed on the track, and that's these calling points. This is Q5. And uh, I guess in an emergency, if you are calling and using satellite phones or navigation systems that can actually text messages, then you can notify where you are. If you need assistance, besides GPS readings, of course. Hello. Yes, there's still some water about on the track, and so we're just using the side tracks rather than getting the car muddy. Don't want to get the car muddy. Since we're travelling alone, um, I much prefer to take the safer track. Um, the last thing I want to do is try and do a recovery by ourselves. And being at the end of the season means there's a lot less vehicles on the track. So recovery could be some time away. Well, it's been an interesting drive so far. We're, um, we've only done 90 kilometers since Birdsville and probably about 40 kilometers from Big Red heading west. We've passed two vehicles. One vehicle was at um, Birdsville heading west and um, a Hilux twin cab with a tray on the back and a big camper set out on the back. Anyway, they broke, they broke the backbone of their Hilux and now uh, they had to turn around and they were heading slowly back to Birdsville. We've just come across a big ram, ram, tough American ram vehicle and um, only literally maybe 10, 20 kilometers down the track here, heading west, the same thing happened to them where the backbone of the four-wheel drive just goes like that and then the, the part that's hanging on the rear act on the on, sitting on top of the rear axle just bends the frame this, this chassis it's incredible driving along through this magnificent desert um i can't help but notice some of the rubbish that people have been left behind so I can't just let it sit there I'm gonna collect it and take it out and uh, that will be my service to community we have a bag on the back on the spare wheel at the back it's called a wheelie bin bag so I think uh, limitation will be the capacity of that bag Not a movement from this theatre dragon. Mm -hmm. 
Well, this is the first attempt of making damper. Almost there. We've got some, we've got some good bits there and some burnt bits. And uh, the base is obviously burnt as well. But I think we're going to have... <sighs> inside should be good. There's some butter. I reckon it's going to be just right. If you really want to top it off, you can just add a little bit of honey on there as well. Bit of honey. Mmm. Hmm. Yummy. It's day two after leaving Birdsville. Uh, so we had a good night's camp. Um, yeah, so not much traffic. We've had a bit of traffic traveling east this morning. Um, but pretty uneventful and beautiful day. It's uh, not too, it's beautiful temperature, 24 degrees. So there's a bit of moisture still left here in the Simpson Desert. You can tell by the type of plants that are around the place. Like this really succulent one here. I mean, it's so moist. It'll be just a matter of, um, I suppose, days. Well, I suppose with so much rain around the place and there's still forecast rain coming, there's so much moisture still in the sand and close to the surface in the water table to provide moisture for plants like this to survive. Otherwise you have the really spiky things like that that come and go. Um, yeah, well that's pretty green. Yeah, so it's green, it's not the greenest I've seen in the Simpson and it's definitely not the driest. I mean, in the dry, in the drought period, this was just all red. Uh, obviously with dead trees around the place. But then these trees, you know, they're really tough and hardy to be able to survive the desert environment. Leah's desperate to find rubbish. She's so disappointed when she can't find anything. Enjoy the walk. Can you go slowly? I can't see it now. That's good. <laughs> Keep going. Just go slowly. There's something shimmering. Slowly. Slow, slow, slow. No, I see it. Oh, she found it. She found it. <laughs> oh my goodness. The things you do for entertainment. Bound, so we're probably just a uh, sand dune away from you. Are you gonna talk? I'm not gonna talk. Thanks. The going is slow, we're probably averaging, I don't know, 20 kilometers an hour or something like that, um, give or take. And uh, we've just crossed from Queensland into Northern Territory. So we'll be heading to the corner of Northern Territory. South Australia and Queensland called Popel's Corner. That's probably, that's still probably an hour or so away. We can sort of go that way and then it's due south for a while. Yeah, so it looks like, uh, well, this particular salt pan, so we just crossed over into Northern Territory and there'll be more salt pans to cross. The main track or the tracks have dried out now, so you can get across these salt pans without necessarily getting wet or clogged which is good because uh, if you get stuck here well you'll be stuck for a while Oh, here we are, Popol's Corner, and uh, yeah, we've got a bit of uh, tourist uh, features, a little information board, 
And my buddy Don Rowland stars here. A Wanganguri country. And he is a Wanganguri builder. And it's great catching up with him in uh, Birdsville. Anyway, um, yeah, so the, the marker for the corner of Northern Territory, Queensland and New South Wales is here. Apparently, the original marker was about 200 metres off. Here it is. South Australia, Northern Territory and Queensland. The is across the border and I'm across the border. Now I'm in another border. <laughs> now I'm in another border. And another border. Is this the most exciting travel you've ever done? <laughs> There is a visitor's book here at uh, Popel's Corner, uh, so we'll sign it. It's there and recorded, and who knows where this book will end up. All right, well, we've got more salt pans to cross as we continue on, possibly to the French line. See how we go. So you can understand why you need a vehicle that's about the standard size to go through these ruts. If your vehicle is too wide when it's wheelbase or too narrow in its wheelbase, then you can get quite stuck. That was quite heavy. Oh my goodness. Didn't even happen four wheel drive. That would have helped. Okay, so that was still quite heavy there. Heavy going. We're, uh, be a bit more careful with the salt pans, I'd say. So we actually started the French line now from Pepper's Corner after that salt pan, and we've got probably about one, two, three, four, five, six more salt pans to cross of varying sizes. Okay, let's go. Cool. sort of a rock and roll day we're going up and down up and down up and down on these uh, on these sand dunes it's just constantly up and down it really gets to you after a while but anyway um out in the desert everything is sharp and um you have you know if you're gonna uh, if you can't do anything out here you have to be prepared that if you're handling anything put on gloves uh because you will get prickles. Here's just an example. Look at the size of this ginormous prickle. It's huge. Absolutely huge. If you're walking around at all and you step on one of these, you really know about it. Just... Yeah. Oh, yeah. On with the journey. So I guess we'll be camping somewhere in the sand dunes uh, tonight. There's at least another 150 odd kilometers of sand dunes that we have to cover. So that's probably another 500 sand dune crossings, I'd say. I think most of the salt pans are now left behind, so that won't be too much of a concern.
So we found another fantastic camp spot. So what's for dinner? A vegetable risotto. Yeah, so How are you we've got make it? well we've got some capsicum, chopped up capsicum, some carrot, and garlic and onion, which will go onto a pot, and then second pot will go onto the rice, and we will have vegetarian risotto a la Simpson. <laughs> cooking method here is using this induction stove here and you have put the vegetables in turn it on turn it to the heat you want and I'm just adding water so what we're finding as we're camping is that it's much easier to wash up and take care of things if we're not using oil, too much oil and fat. So garlic in here and I'm going to add some seasoning to that. Oop. So what do you think of uh, this whole idea of induction cooking? In oh camping? it is so fast. Much safer than uh, gas or mucking about with, I don't know, what do we have? Methylated, Methylated burners. burners or um, yes, and it runs off this um, battery pack here. What is it? An iTech world. And then that then charges up during the day while we're driving. So we have our, literally have our own uh, power source right here. So easy, quick, very quick, quick to um, boil water and cook. So you actually using a lot less energy so once this cooks a little bit just let it come to the boil cook up the onion and garlic a bit and then I'll be adding in the capsicum and the carrots and we're not going to eat all of this tonight it's actually going to be probably two or three evenings meals but again you know when we've got a fridge we can cook once and then just warm it up in the next couple of nights and it'll be just as good. Oh, here it is. Uh, vegetarian a la Simpson? Is it risotto a la Simpson? It is vegetarian risotto a la Simpson. Okay. Delicious parsley grown in our garden in Sydney. Mm, still delicious a week later. Bon appetit. Co-driver uh, taking over right now. Yeah! Oh, did something broke? No, that was just a Now what? Second gear. That's it. Same speed. Okay, going fast. Concentration. <laughs> Doing a great job. Slow down first, and first gear. Oh, there's a big bump there. That's all right, just steady. Just steady, steady. The car really does do all the work, doesn't it? Yeah, I see it. As long as you've got it all set up. And how have you set it up with the car today? <laughs> Second gear. Now that Lee is an expert in four-wheel driving, we are sort of contemplating how to do this particular track. There's two tracks, one off to the left, one off to the right. High ratio, first gear, with momentum. Alright, let's give it a go.
time to take some photographs but this is a beautiful location here outstanding meet all sorts of interesting characters on the Simpson Desert and we've got a special guest from overseas. Thank you so much. Yeah, maybe you can introduce Hi. yourself. <laughs> yeah, my name is Hamad. I am from the United Arab Emirates. I have LC79 Toyota and uh, I start my trip from Russia. That was in May last year. Wow. Yeah, and from Russia to Europe to Finland from Finland to Norway, and then to Sweden, to Europe, then to North Africa, to uh, Tunisia, then back to Europe, to Turkey, to Iran, then to Dubai. Then I shipped my car again uh, to Australia. I received my car in Sydney. And I was in Sydney, Brisbane, Alice Spring, uh, Darwin, Perth, and then with the Simpson uh, Desert. Just a little side trip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Birdsville, then yeah. south, south yeah. to Melbourne. Okay. Yeah. And uh, after Melbourne, uh, I have no plan, no, no clear plan. I have many plans, but as you know, you travel before and you know what's going on. You have yes. many plans, but... Adjust mm. accordingly. Yeah. Okay. Hamad and... Fahad. Fahad. Okay. Yeah. Well, enjoy your trip. Um, Thank you so much. And I look forward to catching you up, uh, catching up with you in Sydney, if possible. Thank if thank not, so maybe uh, back in the Middle East somewhere. Probably, yeah. yeah. I will give you my contact. I am in uh, UAE, yeah. and uh, more than welcome. I'll be. How can I say? Is settle down again, or just stop? My, maybe after one year from now. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Life is yeah. short, and uh, opportunities are rare. So. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so can. much. Thank you so much, guys. Enjoy the trip. You too, guys. You too. All right. We'll just have to plow through this. Mm. We have lunch at Colson Trek. Um, S. Uh, today we are planning to get to Dalhousie Springs and. At this rate, with breaks, it's going to be somewhere around the 6 p.m. But Dalhousie Springs is special because, besides having uh, toilets and showers, cold, cold showers, not cold showers. Cold showers. The water comes from the spring itself, but by the time it gets to the shower, it's gone cold. But the actually, you can you can swim in the springs, and the temperature of the water is something like. 32 degrees Celsius. It's really warm. So looking forward to that. A highlight. A swim tonight and a swim tomorrow morning. that I've collected plastic bottles, tins, cans, just by the side of the sand dune, going from Birdsville to Dalhousie Springs. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh this is heaven, isn't it? This is just the perfect way to end a four day desert journey through the Simpson. Beautiful Dalhousie Springs, a million year old water, apparently it's three million year old water. Anyway, we have one night here and then we start our adventure journey up to Alice Springs via Fink and the original Gan Railway. We will follow that trail. And we're then heading up to Darwin and across to Broome. But more about that later. Bye! Wonderful swimming in the springs. It's such, such warm water. So after you know, three nights or well, three days out in Simpson Desert, it was nice to have a 
path. But uh, the mozzies are crazy around here, and luckily um, I've got this awning uh, that has a fly screen. That makes a huge difference. Uh, it just the, the insects, the mozzies particularly, are just ferocious around here. We're going to continue on to Mount Dare, fill up there, get some supplies, and then go to a, two other scenic locations that I'd like to visit. And that's uh, Chamber Pillars and Rainbow Valley. Coming up.